to what is this guy doing? <laughs> this list doesn't have anything. It's not written. Nothing is written there, bro. Someone is going to get fired. Anyway, guys, it's finally happening. Welcome to What's the Story. I'm your host, Farah Murondo. And today, I'll be reviewing Kings of Jobek. Let's take a look. After watching the trailer, I'm sure now you know that this is a six-part series that's available on Netflix. And it's about the Masiri brothers who ruled Johannesburg's criminal underworld. But a supernatural curse threatens to kill them. <laughs> now let's actually take a look at the cast. Um, I think the casting was great. I mean, they had Shona Figerson who is playing uh, Simon. And then they had um, Zulisa Kaluva who was playing Mo. They had Stembiso Koza, Abdul Koza. They also had um, SK, TK, Sibutoma. So I think they actually had a great casting agent there. However, I just feel like with those names that were actually popping up. Oh, oh also including, last but not least, uh, Connie Figures and AKA Karabo Moroka to those who are old. <laughs> Let me not expose my age. Um, however, I still feel like we were watching um the river versus the queen with a dash of gomorrah <laughs> no i mean i mean if you check all the um actors were coming from uh, those three uh telenovelas that we have in the country um i also have another question when it comes to the casting because i saw some um Butler samuels was actually playing the mother to tk and then i was like wait a minute those guys look like of the same age i know that when it comes to casting you need to actually look you know it's about the looks not necessarily the age you know what i mean i mean but i mean guys didn't you see that they look more or less um <laughs> equal i mean it didn't make sense that tk was actually um is the is the is the, is the son to um Bushy samuels and then i think yeah when it comes to the cast honestly that's literally my opinion and then we can move to the storyline the plot i saw that twitter was actually divided like very very divided people had different opinions and majority of those opinions were literally it was sad to see people being bitter you know saying that no this is shit the show is it's not doing well and all of that and then um from my take when it comes to the storyline I feel like the storyline was actually relevant like it's relevant because we have heard stories of guys rolling around with their cars uh, with snakes and all of that and then the theory behind it conspiracy theories behind it is that they actually sacrifices their family members for wealth for power for access to whatever the power that they want to gain you know what i mean so that was something that i actually picked up and i was like damn the storyline is actually on point now i want to tell you what i feel like actually hindered this production in terms of the delivery you know what i mean because a lot of people are also talking about that like no the cast is actually doing good in those three shows that i actually mentioned but in this show they didn't deliver and then i look at it i'm like um have you ever seen a joe bag gangster speaking english like how Oh, oh, oh. I saw them say never. We have never seen a Jobe gangster speak in English. I'll tell you why I'm saying that. Because I know that a lot of people are like, yo, it's because they were trying to appeal to the global market. You are in South Africa, you watch Money Heist on Netflix in Spanish. But that show is still one of the best shows that Netflix has ever produced. Why can't they just use the nag? Would you, as an actor, I know that you are supposed to be acting, obviously, but would you, as an actor, um, be like, okay, cool, you know the character that a jawbag gangster looks like. You know GP, GP, is it GP, right? The Fusek guy, Fusek! So imagine, I'm pulling up at the robot, and then uh, some random guy pull up at my window with a gun, and then you say, Fuck you! Get out of the car! Fuck you! Get out of the car! Will I get out of the car? Of course not! I'm a jawbacker, nigga! I need a person to say, Fusak! Pumemotwen! Manje! 
I'm not even gonna wait. Take my card. Do you need shoes? Do you need my underwear as well? Definitely gonna take my underwear. I'll give you my underwear as well because that pussy has some gangster reason in it. So my point is that actors are not to be blamed there because they were actually i think they were told because that show i mean most of the time except for um the our lead actor is the one who was so analyzing you know trying to put sitsuana there which i actually highly recommend as well um but all of them were actually speaking in english i mean come on come on bro in Jobeg, bro zulu tsohana venda tsonga whatever you, you know what I mean? We need to have that because Money Heist was actually giving us that. And then you actually enjoy Money Heist more when you're watching it in Spanish, you know, because they know what they're talking about. The world of story is um, is their territory. Even the world of story was Joe Beck. So Joe Beck needs to portray the way Joe Beck is to the world. You can't sell America to Americans when you're a South African. I don't think that it works like that. I'll repeat. You can't sell America to Americans as a South African. You definitely need to sell South Africa to Americans. And that's how we will definitely move forward. You know what I mean? And we'll progress as a country in the film industry. So if you are an actor and then you are acting a, gang, a job a gangster who is speaking in English, what type of gangster is that? I mean, come on. I wanted that to take. I, I, um, I can reference this to a part where uh, Abdul Koza and um, SK were actually trying to stop the car which was uh, which had a bag that they were looking for and then the next thing they are pulling up with the stick and then fuck you get out what what I'm like no bro imagine if he was you know with that baseball stick and then he was speaking in Venek like if said put me more anywhere if said gloom an hour and pull my up you know that's what we wanted that's what the viewers want to see because he was going to genuinely feel it i'm not saying that they didn't perform well though but i'm saying that they were going to take it to the climax like to its best potential the characters were definitely going to come out and we were definitely going to enjoy them so language is something that i think it messed up that uh, that show I think it actually messed up that show. So they were supposed to venek it, venek it, venek it, venek it. And we we're gonna have Yizu Yizu, the return, Baba, because that's what Jobeg is about. Especially when you're saying that King's of Jobeg, you need to be a king in Jobeg. So now, another thing that I actually liked about the show was their cliffhangers. Their cliffhangers were quite amazing. I mean, the last part that we saw uh, was uh, Mo trying to shoot Shona, and then we only. We just had like a sound of the gun and then that was it and then uh, we are not sure whether he's dead or not but uh, I, I, I hope he's dead because I mean you can't be casting yourself in all of the movies that you're producing you're the executive producer leave other kids <laughs> I'm just joking guys <laughs> um, and also another thing that I actually liked about the, the, the other cliffhanger is um, when Mo didn't decide on what he's going to do with his girlfriend who was an undercover cop trying to catch him and his brother you know what i mean and now she's pregnant and then now he knows that um uh, she's an undercover cop who was trying to cuff him so what is he going to do i think that's the question that we are raising as well another cliffhanger that i actually liked guys is the uh, tembi theater with abdul koza in a car and then you know because the romance is hitting up you know she's trying to tell him that no man um don't be shook or be shaken by the by the by the by the power that um simon has because um, he gets it from the mermaid, you know, that's like exposing the secret and that's like the whole premise of the show meaning that uh, We don't know what's gonna happen. What is Abdul going to do about that information? You get what I mean? That's something that I'm actually looking forward to in the next season Lastly on the cliffhangers this guy pulls up at the airport. He's an American guy out of nowhere I don't know what his story is. He kills the person that picks him up at the airport and then he drags Shona figures and son and mother and take them to some dungeon and then the next thing It's time to beat beat them and then he killed the wife, right? And then after that Shona figures and pulls up of course to be the Superman I'm a bio Superman nigga pull up when he pulls up they are beating him like bro from 0 to 100 that guy was beat 10 nil 10 nil 10 nil he was gone and then after, after that, that guy just disappears. What are you trying to tell us? What's the cliffhanger there? Because I'm still hanging. 
I know. I'm still hanging. So that's just one of the things that I actually look at and I'm like, damn, this is actually brilliant. But I have a lot of questions. What are you trying to do? Because are you trying to build a character for the next season? So guys, what I'm going to recommend to you guys is that please, Kulumane is Zulu, Tetani is Kosa, Ambani Shivenda, Bulabula Shichonga, any other Venek language, please put that and make sure that that's something that you're actually using because people want to see the best potential of the actors and actresses and I'm sure they will deliver if they're using vernacular language. But I'm definitely looking forward to the next season. Trust me, I love your show. I'm a fan of your work and I need to rate your show out of 10 popcorns. How many popcorns should you give them out of 10? Uh, five. Why? <laughs> okay guys, I'm definitely going to give you 5 popcorns out of 10 um, because on the next one, if you listen to my advice you are definitely getting 10 out of 10 you are getting to know like you have something great that's going on and i'm definitely proud that uh, there are more stories that are going to netflix which are south african which is opening doors for filmmakers and storytellers which is a great thing for the industry the industry is growing the industry is opening definitely gonna see you guys next week and uh with our next review i'm sure that you're gonna love it uh, let me enjoy my my wine and uh